are back from Las Vegas and in the thick of Interop ITX. I'm Sarah Peters. Our next guest is another iWeek IT Excellence Award finalist. In fact, winner, Global IT Director of Server Storage and Data Center for ConocoPhillips, Scott Duplantis. Scott, thank, thank you. Thank you so for nice being to be with here. me. It's a pleasure. Um, so first, just tell me now about the submission. Why? Why did you win the Infrastructure Award? So, we basically, I came on board with the company that I'm at about four years, and it took me about a year to figure out that we had a buying pattern and a deployment strategy that you know, basically just added and added and added. We, we never shrunk, we never got smaller, we never you know, took the time to rethink our deployment from a vendor perspective or from a uh, platform perspective. We just kept adding storage, adding servers. Um, it was obvious that that was going to be unsustainable that you know, over time we would grow out of our data center, and in fact, they had grown out of the data center for the HPC computing years ago for the very same reason, they just keep adding. So, dial the clock forward about almost a year from that, you know, we had already started a strategy to say we need to reduce this footprint. We need to be smarter, consolidate systems, buy smarter, and then the downturn in oil and gas happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the analogy I give is imagine if both of us lost 60% of our income and couldn't do anything about it, what would we do? <laughs> and we had to do some very dramatic things to really, you know, be able to cut costs because maintenance and people are your only two levers to really turn in IT to cut OPEX. So, we wanted to save the people, so we went after all of the OPEX. One of the ways that we could do that was to consolidate these very large systems. So, you know, roughly 46 petabytes globally of storage and about 7,000 servers globally. We focused in our two major data centers in North America, so, you know, Bartlesville and Houston, which is our largest footprints, mm -hmm. and we started attacking those from a how can we buy smarter, consolidate down to smaller, to larger, denser, more powerful systems, and have less objects to manage. So the, the, uh, what I tell my team is we run a very sophisticated strategy, which is keep it simple. <laughs> I'll leave the last S. We know where you're going. <laughs> we know where you're going. Um, so the goal was to get down to less objects under management, and for each of those objects, where possible, shift to new technologies that allowed us to have less touch. Which gave people time and, you know, to work on other things like cloud and hybrid cloud, which is an initiative that we're moving into, but we couldn't hire people and we couldn't bring in outside consultants because we just didn't have the funds to do so. So we had to free people up to be able to work on these higher value items. So you're taking this opportunity, you knew that you had to consolidate and you figured since you were going to be making changes anyway, you take the opportunity to make changes that were going to improve efficiencies of other kinds as well. Win on multiple levels. Right, okay. So how did you do that? So the, uh, we, we started the, uh, the attack, so to speak, mm -hmm. on our sand storage. So we had roughly about 5.6 petabytes of raw sand storage uh, between various, uh, what I call the big blue vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and we reevaluated all that and determined that before most of the market and companies our size were thinking this was the path, you know, we made the call that we think all flash arrays with deduplication and compression enabled full time we're going to allow us to be able to really collapse that environment. We went from the 5.6 petabytes of raw storage on the floor down to about 1.8. So 150-ish racks of storage down to about 20 racks of storage. Um, the floor space savings that we realized out of that, that, that slice of the pie, that horizontal aspect of it, was about 80% floor reduction, about $400,000 a year, about 300, 300 or so thousand dollars a year in power and cooling savings alone. Wow. So on a five year TCO, you know, you can do the math, that's $1.5 million worth of savings to the business just by doing that. But the storage administrators now were managing a lot less devices. They didn't have all the different complexity of different vendors and all of their management tools. They had one vendor and one management tool. So it was vastly simpler to manage. So that was uh, our first big win, and that took us about 24, a little more, almost 30 months all in. We started with our virtual systems environment. Mm -hmm. So our virtual systems environment, when we grew into other AIX and databases and the Oracle footprint and our physical servers and all of that, and fully realized it all to convert everything we had on SAN before onto all flash. And that included SAP, ERP, BW, our highest end systems, which are all on 
tier one, very expensive frames. Um, in the ESX space, our virtual systems were about 80% to 85% virtualized in the Windows and Linux space. We, we approached that by using the little refresh dollars we had from the downturn, which was a pretty significant number less than what we would normally spend, yeah. but we really didn't need to spend all that money. We could buy less by driving densities up. So we ran a similar play where we invested in a control plane technology from a company um, that competes with VMware in this space that allowed us to, so the, the faster memory, faster CPU, you know, more powerful boxes, we bought a lot less of them than we normally would because mm. we weren't going to do a like for like refresh and we drove our densities up just by having faster servers. Then we applied this software which manages CPU and memory auto, automatically in a way that humans just cannot. It's all done with heuristics and algorithms to where you set it on auto and it moves everything. So imagine VMware's technology moving things around 10, 20 times a day. This is moving it around 600 times a day. But what happens is that graph you see of all your performance numbers, it's kind of all spiky, just flattens right out. And then we started to turn up the volume and brought the densities up. So we went from the best case of 20 to one densities on our hypervisors to uh, 60 to one plus. Did you see any, was there any downside to having that's that a, kind of density? That's why we started with our virtual system for our first all flash play, yeah. as well as this uh, control plane software, is because you know, the good thing about virtualized systems, they're very easy to move. Yes. And they're very easy Almost to move around and be move. flexible <laughs> with. If you're not careful. Um, and at first, you know, we turned on this control plane technology you know, in the uh, tell me what, you, what you're going to do. All right, mm -hmm. go do that. And then we put it in the check in and then approve. Mm -hmm. And then we realized pretty quickly that all of our systems were getting more breathing room. So we set it on automatic and uh, the number of performance calls that we got from our user base on the virtual systems went from you know, multiple times a week to never. We literally don't have performance issues on, our, um, on that environment. Wow. Now it doesn't hurt that it's all flash <laughs> and we have a, a product managing the CPU and memory to such a an aggressive and elegant way. Well, Scott, it sounds like you're doing very exciting things there, so I'm not surprised that you won this award. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being here. It was a privilege to be here and very nice to meet you. Likewise. That's Scott DePlantis from ConocoPhillips. More from the news desk right after this, so don't go away.